and welcome to Top Care India. My name is Gavin Rodriguez and I am in Spain at the beautiful circuit of Jerez. Uh, those of you that watch MotoGP know the circuit really well. Uh, for me, it was the first time. Um, I'm not really a major MotoGP fan, but uh, after experiencing the circuit, I think I just might be. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better companion on this uh, journey than the all new 2023 Triumph Street Triple RS. So, uh, back in India, I actually ride a Street Triple RS. I have a 2018 Street Triple RS. I have done tons of miles on it. I have traveled all across Rajasthan, all across South India, and uh, I have a good uh, sort of experience. And this motorcycle really takes everything that was great about that bike and make it even better. So, so far I haven't rode this bike on the road yet, just on the track, so I'm gonna keep my points just limited to the track. Um, so for starters, ergonomics. I think for the track, the ergonomics are perfect. Uh, maybe the Moto2 bike might have slightly better ergonomics, but um, it's, it's, I think for most people, it's not a, not a huge deal breaker. I think the ergonomics are really good. And uh, for me, for the first time on this track, I've never taken my own bike to the track just yet, but so comfortable, so quickly. And I think that really speaks volumes for this motorcycle, just how easy it was for everyone, uh, including the other journalists, to get comfortable just like that. Within the first few laps, we were comfortable. So uh, it started off raining. Um, it was raining quite heavy yesterday and uh, we had a damp track. But despite that, the motorcycle performed fabulously. Uh, we had traction control off, we had ABS off and um, it did a fantastic job. Sure, I did have a few little slips here and there, but uh, fortunately not a single person had a fall. And I think that's very commendable about the motorcycle, about just how comfortable everyone was. So uh, ergonomics and comfort aside, uh, one thing I would like to mention ergonomically speaking is there is a ton of wind blast, just, just a lot of wind blast. Anything above 160 kilometers per hour and you're just blown in the face with a lot of wind. So you're holding on for dear life. So if I were you and I was going to get this motorcycle, I would definitely put a visor up front. Um, Triumph does offer a visor. I haven't seen it yet. I remember the previous bike got a visor that was like this much, barely made a difference. But if you look at aftermarket units, uh, you should find a good enough visor. And to me, when I put a visor onto my bike, it made a huge difference. So that's something I would definitely recommend. Now, on this bike, uh, we are running uh, Pirelli Super Corsas. Extremely sticky rubber, great for the track. I wouldn't waste them on the street if I were you. If I was going to buy this bike and ride it on the street, the first thing I'd do is probably swap the Super Corsas out and maybe run a pair of Michelin Road 5s or something like that, which would do much better on our Indian roads. Um, but that aside, motorcycle is great. Uh, so you've got a new exhaust now. Let, let's go with the mechanical bits. So mechanically speaking, uh, the all-new Street Triple RS has a heavily reworked engine. You could say practically all the parts that are present inside the engine are brand new and uh, it, it's increased the power. It's also allowed Triumph to bump up the compression ratio. So the compression ratio is around 4.7% uh, higher than it was. Uh, now this motor on the RS is closer to the motor that you find on the Moto2, whereas the motor that's present on the regular Street Triple R is closer to what the RS used to have. So that's really nice to know that you're you're running compression ratios that's pretty close to a race bike. Uh, the power two has gone up by about seven bhp, so you're now producing about 130 bhp, and torque has gone up by two newton meters, so you're producing about 80 newton meters of torque. Additionally, all of this power and torque comes in a lot sooner. So earlier you would have to ring the motorcycle to about 10,000 rpm before you saw peak power and peak torque kick in, but now you can see it kick in as early as seven, seven and a half, eight thousand rpm, which is great. Um, Triumph has also tweaked the gearbox. So the first gear is slightly longer, but the gears that follow after that are a lot shorter, giving you better drive out of corners. And some of these corners, I was, I was exiting with such ferocity that I, I wouldn't even imagine. Like every now and then that I would glance the speedometer, I would realize, wow, holy shit, I'm doing like 140 out of a corner. I'm doing 150 into a corner. And uh, that feeling to know that you can carry so much speed. And, to even know that the motorcycle has so much more to offer than I could extract from it. I wouldn't exactly call myself a professional. I would say um, I am at a novice level, maybe slightly better. Uh, I, I feel like I've done my fair share of road riding, but track riding, not nearly as much as I would have liked to. But despite that, uh, I felt like this motorcycle had so much to extract it. Each corner, I would get more and more comfortable on the motorcycle. We had three sessions, so by the third session, I was so comfortable, I was scraping my knee. I was exiting corners, I was entering corners a lot hotter, I was carrying a lot more speed and I still felt like this motorcycle had so much more to offer. 
and it's honestly quite commendable what Triumph has been able to do with this motorcycle. It's this motorcycle was launched back in 2007. That was when the first iteration of the Street Triple came out. We're now in 2023 and this motorcycle has grown leaps and bounds. It produces nearly as much power as the old Speed Triple used to produce. Just 10 horsepower shot, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, to see that this kind of weight, the size, the dimensions, but that kind of power, the power to weight ratio, it's honestly amazing. So back in India, we've got uh, the Z900. Um, Maybe if KTM decides to launch the new 890, then that and the Monster. But apart from those three motorcycles, or two, given that those two are out right now, there is nothing really competing with this motorcycle. And I would say that this is the best you can get in its class. In fact, I would go as far as saying this is probably better than a lot of motorcycles in a class above too, just because of how easy it is for you to ride. And the one thing that I've learned with track riding, it's if you want to go faster, um, it's the key is to be more comfortable on your motorcycle. It's being more comfortable with yourself and what you're doing. And this motorcycle does a fantastic job of making you comfortable. Sorry, a bit too much about comfort. Now let me talk about how it feels to ride this bike. So, braking, let's talk about braking. So you've got new uh, Brembo Stylema calipers. You used to have M50s, now you have Stylemas and uh, they perform phenomenally. You know that feeling you get when you ride a motorcycle for the first time and the acceleration takes you by surprise? This does the same thing, but with the braking. I was just, you could say I was dialing in the brakes about 20% and it would stop on a dime. The kind of braking force this motorcycle has, it's insane. Uh, it's something worth experiencing and it really takes you by surprise just how far. And with each lap, I could see my braking point going further and further and further and further and I felt like I could push it even more. So again, very commendable. It's extremely light, this motorcycle. So um, they've got a new exhaust. They went, they ditched the two catalytic converters. Now you have one catalytic converter and uh, you no longer have any aftermarket units of power parts from Triumph per se. Like you used to have the arrow exhaust earlier. Now you don't have that anymore. And uh, I highly doubt you would need it uh, because I think this exhaust sounds and performs really well. And I'm sure if you weigh this exhaust, it actually weighs maybe just a kilo and a half more than an aftermarket unit and I don't think an aftermarket unit really justifies um, its price or its demand anymore because if you're paying north of 50,000 rupees for an aftermarket unit exhaust but you're only losing about a kilo and a half I don't think that's considerable enough given in fact this exhaust even sounds great so um, okay when it comes to sound let me warn you um, all of you local speedsters back at home in India the people that like to sit on stoplights and ring the, <laughs> ring the motorcycle and get as much noise and attention you can no longer do that because you've got a soft limiter on the bike. So now the only way you can sound good on this bike is by actually riding it. And thank God for that. Maybe these guys will actually go out and ride a bit more and uh, yeah, char OT GP, I guess. But uh, sounds fantastic, handles really well, um, brakes really well. It just does everything really well on the track so far. And I am thoroughly impressed by this motorcycle. I wish I spent more time with my own motorcycle on the track. But um, yeah, phenomenal performance on the track. So uh, aesthetically speaking, as you can tell, the styling has been heavily reworked. So now it looks a lot more aggressive, a lot more angular. The previous Street Triple RS um, looked a lot more minimal in comparison, uh, especially if you look at the 2018 model. It had a nice smooth tank. Uh, the lines were very clean, nothing too angular, but this sort of like changes that. It's got a lot more angular bits going on. Uh, you can see it's got a nice radiator shroud over here. Uh, the, um, now this bit earlier used to be separate but now it's connected to the tank. The tank used to be metal earlier but now it's plastic. Uh, this probably has helped try and lose some weight but then they've used that space to add other things which is sort of like equalized it. So I wouldn't really say the weight has really changed all that much. Um, so the suspension on the Street Triple RS remains the same as before. Um, You've got Showa folks in the front, um, completely adjustable. You've got Olin setup in the back, again, completely adjustable. Now, the problem that I have noticed back in India is unless you are the kind of person who's meticulous enough to go and study suspension setup, and believe me, suspension setup is very important. It can make a night and day difference in your riding. Unless you're the kind of person who 
has that experience and who's willing to really dive into it and tune the suspension, um, you're not really going to extract the most out of it on the road. So maybe you're riding your Street Triple RS right now on the road thinking, wow, this is so uncomfortable. I feel like you really have to go play with the suspension. Maybe go watch a couple of Dave, Dave Moss videos or uh, find someone who can help you tune the suspension. And I promise you, you will be so much more comfortable on this motorcycle because the suspension has so much capability. Um, now the handlebars, they're pretty wide as they were, but now they are about 12 mm wider. That's that does definitely add a lot more in terms of control, especially on the track. It really allows you to hang off the bars a lot easier. And uh, riding in the street, I think this could be a problem given how congested our Indian roads can be. We can have bumper to bumper traffic and uh, sort of like lane splitting can be an issue. But uh, that is something you have to keep in mind and you have to be a bit more careful just because of how far the handlebars, especially with the mirrors, they're jutting out. Um, now, when it comes to accessories, uh, Triumph does provide a couple of accessories, but now, like I said, there's no performance accessories. All the accessories are limited to just um, aesthetics and protection. So, um, yeah, and you can get like a tail bag or a tank bag or whatever you like. The scowl that you see over here, the scowl comes standard with the RS. You get a, don't worry, you get a seat also. Uh, you can choose, you get both together with the bike. So for me, I personally, since nobody, <laughs> People don't really like to ride with the pillion in the back. I have got rid of my foot pegs and my seat. But when it comes to touring, I can tell you that this motorcycle is surprisingly touring friendly. I think I've done about um, about 30,000 kilometers on my motorcycle. And uh, every time I have a tailback, it's surprisingly comfortable to carry a tailback on this motorcycle. There's, uh, the, the, you've got mountain points over here and very stable, very nice. And I'm honestly quite amazed that this is a motorcycle that can you can do go for a 5,000 kilometer road trip, ride a month long across India, and then find your favorite track and go and rip the tire to shreds and have a wonderful time and come back home. And to see the duality that this motorcycle has, it's so commendable. I'm not saying this because I'm a Triumph fanboy, but uh, if I wasn't, they've definitely won me over this time because it's just such a fantastic package. Um, now. Aesthetically, if you didn't like the previous motorcycle, I can bet you you're going to like this one because I don't know if photos will do justice to it. You really have to see it in person, but it just looks bellissimo. It looks beautiful. Now, the one problem that I do have with this motorcycle on the track is the TFT. I'm not a huge fan of it. When I first got my, I thought, wow, this is so cool. The TFT is so something different. You know, we're all used to riding analog motorcycles, so our TFT was quite different, especially with the animations, everything. Uh, this TFT seems a bit slow. When you start it, when you boot it up, it takes its own sweet time to boot up. Um, when you're riding on the track, it's very hard to focus because of how tiny the fonts are. I wish Triumph gave you an option for the track where they allowed you to have much bigger fonts. So when I look down at it, it's much easier to read and I know exactly where I am in the rev range, but uh, it's a lot harder um, to sort of figure out. So, and I think new riders would struggle with that. Experienced riders would probably not even bother looking at the speedo, but new riders will. I did speak to Triumph about this and I asked them why they haven't gone for a part analog and part TFT sort of setup. Um, they said that this is a lot more compact. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot easier to fit. And the advantage, uh, the advantages when it comes to customizability is a lot more. Plus, given that you have a lot more accessories that you can add onto it. So like, for example, with the new RS, you have optional uh, cruise control. Um, you've got uh, maps built into it, turn by turn navigation. You can control GoPro settings through it. And I think all of that is only possible through a TFT, um, not so much with an analog. So um, you win some, you lose some, but uh, it's down to your personal taste. Oh yeah, if you haven't noticed already, the headlamp design is new. Uh, they've gone for a more aggressive sort of headlamp. So now the air damp is located over here. Um, the sort of headlamp resembles what you find on the Speed Triple. So it's sort of my coming a bit more streamlined following the design language that the rest of the bikes do, except for the Trident, that's a bit different, but yeah, that. The engine feels so good, it's so smooth, it just revs so freely. This has an up and down quick shifter and uh, the up and down quick shifter works phenomenally well. Uh, it blips. When I was coming into the straight, I don't know if you can see this long straight over here, but each time I enter the straight, I was flying above 200 kilometers per hour. I would reach the end of the corner by about 205 kilometers per hour and then doom, 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 down to from going all the way from fifth gear down to second gear just so quickly. And I think this motorcycle has so much ferocity and the ferocity doesn't come at the cost of comfort. It doesn't make you work harder as a rider. Sure, you can. And when you do, you can extract a lot more. 
but for a novice rider to get so much out of it, I think that's quite commendable. Certain styling elements are unique to the RS. This red color, for example, is unique to the RS. You get a red, you get like a bumblebee yellow, and you get the silver, but unlike the matte silver that we used to get, this one now is a more glossier silver, so that's pretty nice. Uh, I think all these colors look fantastic. I can't pick a favorite so far because I think all three of them look stunning, especially the red and the bumblebee, uh, the yellow. Those two are by far my favorites, um, maybe because I've seen the silver a bit too much, my bike's silver, so I've seen a bit too much of it, but uh, yeah, fantastic package for the track over here. And um, I can't wait to ride the motorcycle tomorrow on the road. We'll be riding it on the streets of Spain and we will also be riding the new Street Triple R and the RS on the road. So yeah, stay tuned and I will tell you a lot more about it tomorrow. So after spending a lovely day with the Triumph Street Triple RS on the track, we had a chance to ride both these bikes on the street today, uh, the Triumph Street Triple R and the RS. Uh, it, we did have a bit of drizzle on the way, uh, so that gave us a good chance to experience what these motorcycles are like in the wet. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, since I'm from India, we had a lot of bad patches, so I think I can give you a good idea about what this bike's gonna be like back in India. So for starters, uh, let's go on with the Street Triple RS. Now, uh, the Street Triple RS performed, again, fabulously. However, I would say that it's probably not the most comfortable option for the street, at least given our Indian roads, you know. Um, the suspension doesn't have a lot of travel. Uh, you can adjust it, and from my experience with my bike, I can tell you that after you adjust it, it is a lot better. But uh, despite that, it, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna be as comfortable as, say, um, a KTM Duke or something like that. It's still a committed motorcycle. It's it's a track machine. It's built primarily keeping the track in mind. It just does the other stuff as an add-on. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, now, I would like to go over the things I did not like about the Street Triple RS, and it's a very it's a very small list because there's so much to like about the motorcycle. Uh, so for starters, I am not a huge fan of the TFT. When I got my motorcycle, I was actually really into the TFT. I thought it was pretty cool, but after spending enough time with it, I've realized that the new TFT layout, I'm not a huge fan of it. I wish um, the numbers were a bit more um, visible. The, the icons are too small and you really have to strain your eyes to really look at it, especially with the sun glaring behind you. So um, I hope that they would have an analog, but um, yeah, for reasons I've already explained, they don't have an analog or a part analog and a part TFT. You have um, this TFT for a reason because it's compact and you can customize it. I I wish that Triumph gave you an option to increase the size of the fonts and the numbers. I think that would make it a lot easier and a lot better. But uh, yeah, that's my one gripe with it. Also, it's a bit laggy. So when you start, it takes its own sweet time to boot up. You don't have to wait for it to boot up entirely. You can just start the bike and get going. But still, yeah, a uh, little disappointing. Again, I'm nitpicking over here. Um, so the brakes, the brakes again performed phenomenally on the street. The tires again performed phenomenally on the street. However, like I said earlier, I wouldn't expect you to waste these tires on the street, uh, in India especially. I, I would suggest getting a pair of uh, Michelin Road 5s or the Continentals on the R. I think they would work just fine for our streets. Uh, especially if you are planning to ride in the monsoon, I would recommend checking out the Michelin Road 5s. They perform quite well on the, in the wet. I have experienced them myself. So yeah, those are the tires I'd recommend. Or the Michelin Road 6 if you manage to get your hands on it. Uh, now, ergonomically speaking on the street, uh, the Street Triple RS is a lot more committed. So you are sitting, uh, also the height of the bike is a bit higher than the R. Uh, they've also raised the tail slightly to give you better attack angle. And uh, that does take away from comfort. So you're, you're sitting with your butt slightly high up, you're bending down forward, and uh, that can be a bit uncomfortable, especially given the amount of wind blast. The amount of wind blast on this motorcycle is just, it's insane, I mean, at some point, once you start reaching triple digit speeds, uh, you're hanging on for dear life. And uh, I only hope that I haven't had a look at what the accessory visor looks like, but I only hope that it's tall enough. I had to get one from this French company called Puge. Puge? I hope I'm not butchering the name. But uh, they had a really nice one that works pretty well. It's about this tall and uh, it integrates itself very well with the design. I hope you can find something like that. But if you don't and you have a tiny visor, you're gonna have a hard time on a windy day. Yeah, like we did today. And um, 
Again, uh, it was cold, so I can't talk about heating issues, but from my experience with my bike, heating was never a problem with the Street Triple RS. Heating, uh, heat management is always very well contained. Um, now, two things that I would recommend getting with this motorcycle right off the bat, if you are buying this motorcycle, is A, an accessory visor, you really need that, and B, you need a radiator guard. Because in India, we have a lot of debris in our road, right? So, um, it's very easy to clog up your radiator, especially in monsoon. Just because of, it's not the bike's fault, it's just our streets. So I would suggest getting a radiator guard, it should solve all your problems. You wouldn't ever have to get into that whole tussle, which I had to, but uh, you could avoid that. So, uh, in the real world, using this motorcycle on the streets with the new tweaks to the engine, uh, you do notice it. You do notice power kick in a lot sooner, comparatively. I mean, if you've rode the previous generation bike, then you would notice. And uh, you also notice that the engine likes to kind of stay on the boil, you know. Uh, you, I, don't, I wouldn't exactly call it very touring friendly unless you're gunning it at all times. It doesn't like to stay at one speed and cruise patiently. You, it'll always have your wrist keep it on boil. And I don't think it's the best tour in that sense. And if I was planning to tour out, I think I would get the accessory cruise control that comes um, uh, as an accessory exclusively for the RS. So it was exceptionally cold today and uh, our the street triple that we were riding came with heated grips. Uh, those are an, an accessory option, so uh, you don't get that and get them as standard. But uh, yeah, they really helped because when your fingers are freezing, I mean, it, it can make a huge difference to have like some warmth to your hands. So again, if you are a person who's going to be riding, doing a lot of touring, uh, you're going to be going to a lot of cold places. Maybe you're going to be riding a lot in the wet. I would recommend getting the uh, the heated grips and. Um, the visor and the cruise control. Definitely you need, and the radiator crack, yeah. These three things. Uh, fuel, fuel efficiency, well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't exactly ride very efficiently today. Uh, every one of us was gunning it and enjoying the Spanish roads over here. So, yeah, you know, fuel efficiency, uh, given the higher compression, I would say maybe it's um, slightly, I mean, my motorcycle would uh, average about, like if I rode it uh, like a sane person, I could squeeze as much as 20 kilometers per liter out of it. Um, but again, this is not the kind of motorcycle where you go over fuel efficiency figures. It's only something I'm mentioning since you are going to be touring and it's something, a factor that you may need to consider. Now, uh, coming to the R. Now, to me, the R was a major highlight. The RS was great, but again, it, the ride quality can be a bit jarring at times because it is dialed in for performance, it's dialed in for attack, it's not exactly dialed in for touring. You would have to tweak the suspension quite a lot to get that out of it. But the R, I was so impressed with the R today. Uh, as soon as you got on the bike. First, I had a bit of skepticism with the tires, but I think they did well. They, did, they surprised me actually, they did quite well. Um, the ergonomics in the R are slightly more relaxed. You're not bending forward as much. And uh, like I said earlier, being comfortable is a lot more important on, st on the street especially. It's not about having the right position. It's not about having clip-ons. You need to be comfortable, especially on Indian roads, where you know the road's very bumpy. So I was quite impressed with the R about how well it performed. And uh, again, like I said earlier, the power on the R is a lot closer to now what the old RS used to produce. So you don't exactly feel like you're down on power. It, it had no trouble keeping up with this motorcycle at all. So I feel like if you are the kind of person who's primarily gonna tour, who is not going to see the track at all, or maybe once in a while, I think the R is a perfect package. I, in fact, I even like the instrument cluster. Sure, you don't have the fancy TFT and um, you can't get the uh, cruise control, but um, it's okay. I don't think that really uh, breaks things for me because just how easy the R is to ride. Riding the R on the street was a lot more comfortable than riding the RS. Uh, it took a while to get comfortable on the RS on the street. Um, again, even though ergonomically it's quite similar to my bike, but this one just felt so comfortable. It was very easy to get comfortable on, especially with the new up and down quick shifter. I barely, I remember when the Street Triple S had come out, everybody that I knew that owned that bike complained about how hard the clutch was. But on this one, um, it's still kind of hard, but I mean, I'm, I, I didn't even use the clutch today. I just used a quick shift for the entire time. And that really makes life so much easier especially on our streets, so I think that's something you'd really appreciate. Uh, sure, you can't get the cruise control, but that's okay. I think this motorcycle is very accommodating and uh, it just makes you, it just makes life a lot more fun. You can actually push it, you can have fun, you can thrash it around corners and it'll do everything. And I would say, I would go as far as saying that, so if you were to get these tires that you have on the RS, um, on the R, I would, 
I'm pretty sure that this motorcycle can keep up with the RS, uh, well, to a certain degree. And uh, that sacrifice of performance, it's, it's not night and day, it's, it's uh, dusk and dawn, you know. So I would say that um, for most riders, if you don't have the skill set to extract the most out of the RS, you'd be perfectly fine with the R. In fact, it's a lot more forgiving, uh, it's a lot friendlier. Uh, I found the dash on the R a lot more uh, legible. It was easier to read. Uh, it's slightly bigger. And it's the same one that you have on the Trident. And I think it performs just fine. I, uh, to me, unless you're the kind of person who's like a tech freak who wants the TFT and all that, I don't think you'll find anything missing per se. You get, you get most of what you want. And depending on how Triumph India prices this motorcycle, it can be very competitive. I would go as far as to say this is probably the best in its class, only bested by its own, its own uh, more aggressive variant, so to say. But uh, best in its class, I don't think anything comes close to the kind of performance, the kind of comfort, the kind of, um, just the kind of fun you can have with this motorcycle. Um, not the Ducati Monster, not uh, the Z900, um, not the KTM, well, not the 790, I don't know if the 890 will ever come to India, but uh, definitely not that. Um, but yeah, uh, now the suspension on this was at times a bit on the softer side, but I think it just it's just going to take a bit of tweaking to get the most out of it. Uh, now for shorter riders, so the RS has slightly higher ground clearance than the R over here. Uh, not by a long shot, but slightly. And from my experience with my RS, uh, I did not... As much as I've rode the bike uh, around the country, I have never had the bottom touch a speed breaker. Whereas I've had a lot of friends that had the S that would con often complain about the header touching and uh, they would have to go and get like an aftermarket uh, belly pan or something like that. So um, I didn't have any such experience, maybe because uh, Spain doesn't really have uh, such tall speed breakers per se. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that could be an issue, but if you're careful about it, that shouldn't really bother you as much. Um, but I am honestly quite impressed with just how well the R can perform. And like I said, if, if Triumph uh, prices it correctly, this, this motorcycle could sell like hotcakes. So um, yeah, coming back to the ground clearance. Now, even the seat height is a bit different. The, R, the RS is slightly taller than the R, but uh, Triumph does offer you uh, an accessory, uh, a lowering seat, a uh, lowered seat, so to say, but you can, uh, you can cut it down by about 20 millimeters. So I think it, that should make a lot more people. And I know a lot of short riders, riders that are shorter than me that do ride the RS. Uh, I don't know about how comfortable they are, but I think it's a lot easier to get comfortable on the R. And like I said, comfort is key, especially if you're gonna to go touring, if you're gonna be riding across long distances. And given our roads, you really want to be comfortable to be able to just be prepared for anything, right? And especially when you're touring, you wanna to have a good time. You don't wanna be uncomfortable. You don't want it to be an ordeal. Uh, with my RS, sometimes, I've had to plan my trips, like I've had, I've had that skepticism like, oh, should I go out? Uh, I'm, I'm going to Malchej Ghat, what are the roads like? Well, too many potholes. I don't think I would have that issue with the R. I think the R is a lot more welcoming. It's a lot more encouraging. It would encourage me to go out on a weekend. It would encourage me to go out on a weekday. I can imagine using this motorcycle uh, to commute inside Bombay, although um, that, that isn't the way I would want to spend time with this motorcycle, but I can totally imagine doing it. And uh, yeah, all in all, I am just so impressed with both these motorcycles. Triumph has done a fantastic job making these great motorcycles even better. And uh, Street Triple has been around since 2007. And I think ever since it came out, it's still been topping the charts. It's still been ahead of the curve. And uh, yeah, I, I, I totally see why. It's got the pedigree, it's got the potential. Even the watered-down version, the R, has the potential. In fact, even the S had great potential. So the R just takes that and makes it better. I, I think the R, for that matter, is the perfect package for India. Uh, given our streets, given our conditions, given the average height of most people, I think the R is just perfect. If you want to tune it a bit more aesthetically, you can get one of those cowls uh, from the bottom. Uh, I remember they used to be selling it at about 16,000, 15,000 rupees. Uh, I don't know what they cost now, but um, just for reference, uh, you can get a cowl, which you do get as standard with the RS, but not with the R, but I'm sure you can get a cowl. It's not that big a deal. But yeah, aesthetically, both these motorcycles look stunning. And um, the bar and mirrors that you see on the RS, again, you can get them on the R too. I, um, riding the RS in traffic and uh, lane splitting can be a bit tricky because of how wide, and now given the fact that the handlebars are, uh, 
are 12 millimeters wider now, which should make lane splitting a lot more difficult. But with the R, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, now, let's talk about the mirrors. Uh, both these mirrors are um, kind of shit, you know? You, you can't really see a lot. Uh, they keep vibrating a lot. And uh, it's, it's okay, I don't really think most people would be using them at higher speeds. I feel like if you're going fast enough, you're probably looking ahead and you're not looking at your mirrors all the time. But uh, yeah, I wish Triumph did something so that they didn't vibrate as much because every time I had to look at them, I had to hold on to the clutch. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, I'm nitpicking over here. I, I've had such a beautiful time and I had a bit of drizzle, a bit of rain but that didn't break down any of our spirits and we all were still having such a lovely time and I think that speaks volumes for a motorcycle to, to give you a random road, a random track, random weather conditions but you still feel so comfortable and so encouraged to keep pushing yourself and have a good time and normally when you have these rides where so we did about 200 kilometers today and after doing about 200 kilometers on these bikes riding it and again mostly corners right and mostly broken roads you do get a bit uncomfortable but we're all back home and um, we're all doing just fine. We're, in fact, we had a lovely time and we were all wishing we could go spend some more time on these motorcycles. So I think that's truly commendable. I only hope that Triumph uh, prices these motorcycles aggressively and um, yeah, and really undercuts its competition. Also, uh, in case I forget, um, I'll be mentioning the specs already. You, you'll see them pop up at the bottom. So in case I forget something, you'll probably find it at the bottom. But uh, all in all, amazing time and I look forward to riding these motorcycles back at home and I would love to do a video where I compare the new RS or the R for that matter with with my old RS so I think that would be great so um, if you like what you saw um, do stick around to the Top Care India YouTube channel uh, this is Gavin Rodriguez signing off